Good evening and welcome to the Kim B. Davis Show. I'm your host, Kim B. Davis. And this evening, I want to speak to you about self-care and why self-care is so important. It is 2022 and we are still hip deep in COVID and there's so much going on. And so many of us wear many hats, especially as women. We're entrepreneurs, we're professionals, we work many different places. We also hold the title of wife, mother, sister, girlfriend, aunt, you name it. Many of us as wives have learned during this time that not only are we responsible for whatever professional pursuit that we've chosen, whether it's white collar, blue collar, retail, restaurant, whatever it is, we're responsible for that. We're responsible for our marriages. We're responsible for our children. We're responsible for our homes. And many of us are responsible for our extended families. And this may seem to some to say, oh, well, you just saying the women are responsible for everything. And it's sort of true because oftentimes when someone is sick in the family, there's usually one or two, maybe a handful of people who are called together. Usually they are women or, or young girls um, who are able to do domestic type of duties such as cooking, cleaning, caring for someone, going to get medicine, administering medicine, counseling, that type of thing. When we talk about marriages, you know, the woman is expected to make sure that her husband is taken care of. She's expected to make sure that her children are well educated, that they are clean, that they are fed. Your house is supposed to look immaculate. You're supposed to do all these things. And yet, where do you fit into any of that? This conversation came, or this idea came from a conversation amongst some friends of mine. And each one of us in our own respects has our own profession. And each of us do very well and work very hard. A couple of us are married and we talk about what the church says. The church says, you know, you are supposed to submit to your husband. That husband is the head of the house. And although he may be the head of the house, this is modern day and you may be working. So not only do you go to work, make the money, come home as the commercial when I was a kid that said, a woman can go to work, bring home the bacon and fry it up in the pan. You do all of that, but you also clean the pan. And you may have to go out the next day and kill the pig and start it all over again to get that bacon. It brings up an important question that we all asked each other. Well, who takes care of us? How do we continue to pour into other people when essentially many of us are running on fumes. And we hear this from women all the time, whether they have one child or multiple children, whether they're taking care of one relative or multiple relatives, even across their own family and then their spouse's family. Because oftentimes I find that, and this is true in my personal case, because I was a doer, in my family, oftentimes I would be called for my maternal and paternal family. And then when I got married, the same thing happened with my husband's family. They would call my husband, but oftentimes, you know, I would be the one to go and do whatever it was. If someone needed a meal, of course I'm going to cook a meal. If someone needed someone to run an errand and pick up medicine or take medicine over or go sit with someone, a lot of times women find themselves doing that. I am stressing to each of you who are seeing this, who are listening to this, think about 
what you're responsible for. I'm not telling you that you should not be doing that. I'm not telling you that it's not right for you to do that. I'm not passing any type of judgment on you. All I'm simply suggesting to you is that you think about how important it is to take care of yourself. If you are constantly running between relatives and taking care of people and fixing food and uh, making sure the relatives are where they should be, especially those of us that are in a sandwich generation where we're taking care of our elderly parents or other elderly relatives, and many are facing dementia or Alzheimer's, which is a whole entirely different challenge where you have to make sure that people are safe. If you have um, your family, they're not living with you, but they're in a facility, you have to manage the facility itself. And that may sound confusing for some, because if you haven't experienced having a relative in a facility, you don't realize that you have to go every day. You can't just put your family member or your loved one in a facility and trust that that facility will do exactly what they say they will do. Now, this is not to say that facilities that have this type of uh, role, that they do a poor job. All I am suggesting to you is that in order to ensure that that job is done well, you need to monitor. That means that someone, has to go to that facility each day to make sure that that loved one is taken care of or at least touch base by phone. And I've had to do this a few different times. And each time it's always been tough because schedules, children, uh, marriages, different re relatives, all of a sudden you'll have one relative who has dementia, who may be in the hospital, who's moving to a facility. Okay, well, what are we taking with them? What are we moving? What do they need? We got to make sure that they're comfortable. We have to make sure that they understand that this is for their benefit, that they're not fighting us. But I still have a home to maintain. I still have children that I'm raising. I still have a husband that I want to come home to. Again, where do you fit in? with all of this. If you are a professional woman and you are in executive leadership or you're in a professional role where you're an accountant, a lawyer, a doctor, a specialty nurse, not that nurses um, aren't professional, but sometimes I'm making a distinction that if you are a specialized nurse, there's different challenges that come for you instead of just being a regular nurse who just does vitals. Whatever your role is, even if you are a general nurse, there are still challenges that come to you because you're managing this particular role. And specifically for those who are in the medical field, how do you manage the amount of time? The amount of time that you have to be in the hospital, the amount of time that you're in your doctor's office or whatever the facility is, because in the age of COVID, it has made everything doubly difficult. Whether you're trying to get people to wear masks, whether you're trying to get people to get vaccinated, whether you're trying to get people to come in and do the regular run of the mill everyday uh, things that they're supposed to do to manage their health. There was a statistic that was said that lots of people are skipping appointments to get mammograms. Lots of people are skipping appointments to check their blood pressure or to uh, do diabetes uh, updates, different things like that. So those things are challenging because you're constantly trying to reach out to someone to convince them to come. To the, to the doctor's office or to the facility to have whatever procedure test, or you are having a um, increase in the number of patients because everybody's coming in sick with some complication or some symptom from COVID. And their concern, is this COVID? Is it, is it the flu is, or is it a combination? We don't know. Teachers, as professionals, you have also a difficult job because you are teaching children. And I'm just talking about 12th grade all, all the way down to kindergarten to preschool. You guys have 
an incredibly difficult job because you are managing little people or young people and dealing with the protocols that we're supposed to have in place with COVID. And anyone that has children knows that you still have to remind whether your child is five or 15, you still have to remind them to keep their mask on. You have to remind them to wash their hands. That in itself is a job. And then you're still trying to teach. You're trying to have people social distance. You're trying to put into practice whatever your district or school has decided will be safe. And you're trying to protect yourself just like nurses and doctors do. You're trying to protect yourself so that when you go home, you don't bring whatever this is home. And again, I ask the question, how do you take care of you when you are so busy taking care of other people? I know that depression, anxiety, drug addictions are up. Suicide rates are up. Why? Because people are stressed and people are stressed because they're not taking the time to manage their own issues, to manage their own emotions and to heal from whatever is going on with inside of themselves. Oftentimes things will happen in our life. And as I have said repeatedly since COVID started, COVID has been a mirror. Whatever is wrong in your life, whatever is wrong in your relationship with your spouse, partner, whomever, in your family, friends, whatever it is, COVID is going to amplify it. Lots of people have gotten married and COVID hit and they had to they were at home with each other and had to spend time together. And many people realize, is this the person that I married? Boy, you're allowed. Or you don't pick up your clothes or you don't do this or you don't do that. And they don't like to spend time with them because they spend so much of their time outside of home. You worked all day. You were busy. On weekends, you had lunches and girls, girl days and guys had golfing and guy outings and different things. And you came together at shorter intervals. And so you could tolerate one another. And now here you are in the midst of COVID with each other 24-7, driving each other up the wall, trying to figure out how you pick this person. Again, what are you doing to take care of yourself? My challenge to each one of you who are listening to this is 22, it's 2022. Let's be intentional about setting good standards for ourselves. Let's be intentional about building rest into our lives. Let's be intentional about saying no to things that don't serve us. Let's say yes to us. Let's say yes to ourselves. We all have to work. If you have children, you have to manage your children. You have to take care of your children. However, you can also take care of yourself. I don't want this to just be, oh, I'm gonna go get a massage or a spa day. I want us to really dig deep and think about what do I need to be the best version of myself? If that is, I need to build exercise, I need to eat better, I need to sleep more. Sleep is such a vital and important process to us, but to many of us, don't get the required amounts of sleep. If you're only getting three to four hours of sleep a night, I'm gonna tell you, the research is not, been, is not going to be kind to you because you're in a deficit. And I know lots of people who will say, well, I can only sleep maybe four or five hours a night and I'm good. I'm quite the opposite. I need at least eight hours. If I don't, I, I'm, I'm not good. However, I know I'm an anomaly and it's okay. 
but I understand what I need. I want each of you to understand what you need. I like to indulge in chocolate shakes. Those are my favorites. They're really good to me. And when I'm having a yucky day, sometimes I need something to just help put me in a good mood. And sometimes you can pray and you can meditate and you can go and work out and you can go walk and you can call someone. Sometimes you need a chocolate shake. And I've learned, I need a chocolate shake. And so now I know in my life when I'm having a yucky day, a chocolate shake is good for me. I know exactly where I like to go and get my chocolate shake. I know exactly how I like my chocolate shake made and I get it. That's what I want all of us to do for 2022. Figure out what you need, what helps to rebuild you up, recharge you up and restore yourself so that you can go out and take care of those that need you and those that you decide to take care of. Don't let 2022 be another year where you feel like you're behind the eight ball or you feel like everybody is just using you or abusing you. There are lots of people saying that, you know, 2022 is, is the year. It's my year. Time's up for things that don't serve me, things that take advantage of me, people that take advantage of me. Time's up for it. Well, guess what? Time is up for you not taking care of yourself. Take care of you and let's have a great 2022. Thank you guys for tuning in to the Kim B. Davis Show. You know that you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, LinkedIn, everywhere on social media. And Bachelor is spelled B A T. C-H-E-L-O-R. You can see the show on youtube.com forward slash Kimberly Bachelor Davis. You can hear this show at Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, and Google. You can find out more about me as an author at kimbdavis.com. Thank you again for tuning in. I hope to see you on our next episode. And as always, remember, be magnificent.